What gives you confidence to face your day? Lots of practice? A good night's sleep? Oh, one of dad's famous breakfasts. A sunshiny day. Brand new shoes? All of these things are great, and they can sure give you a lift. But what happens when you twist your ankle, can't sleep, the pancakes burn, the storm clouds gather, and you get mud on those new kicks? Suddenly, you don't feel so up anymore. It's tough to face your day. You feel downright deflated. But there's a kind of confidence that can't be washed away in a rainstorm. Because what God sees when he looks at you never changes. In God's eyes, you are chosen, accepted, valuable, created for a purpose, loved beyond your wildest imagination. And when you learn to see yourself the way God does, you can face anything. Because God's view of you will never change to the end of time and beyond. When you have confidence to get in the mix, others can see God at work in you. That's why confidence is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Mic check. One, two, one, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play! Oh. What's up, everybody? It's me, Graham. How do you like my smolder? 
I'm smoldering because in my line of work, you've got to have confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. I don't know how you see yourself, but I see myself as a performer. You should hear me sing. I sing everywhere, in the shower, in my car, alone in my room, everywhere except in front of other people. That's where I draw the line. I when I'm alone, I'm like the most confident singer on the planet. But when other people are involved, I freeze up. And it's not just when I'm singing, it's when I'm playing an instrument. Or when I'm playing baseball. I got it. I got it. You get it. Or anytime someone asks me a question and I'm not sure of the answer. Why is the sky blue? Oh, uh, well, there's a very, very good reason. The, uh, the p p part particles in the, um, uh, uh, the app. Basically, anytime people are watching, I lose my confidence. I start to doubt myself. I forget to see myself the way God sees me. If that's something that happens to you, you're gonna wanna stick around for today's story. It should be pretty cool. I can't see anything in these. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. As Jesus began to travel and teach and perform miracles, people started asking, Who is this man? One of these people was a man named Nicodemus. He had been born a Jew. Well, yes, we are God's chosen people. Not only that, but Nicodemus was also a Pharisee, an important religious leader, and he was a member of the Sanhedrin, which was the Jewish high court. After careful consideration, I find that you have disobeyed God's law. And to top it off, Nicodemus was one of the leading teachers of Old Testament scriptures. You must never work on the Sabbath. Uh, would you like to hear me recite the other 612 laws? So it seemed like if anybody had a direct path to heaven, it was Nicodemus. But even though he tried his best to follow God's rules, he might have sensed something missing as he watched Jesus teach, as he heard about the amazing thing this young rabbi was doing. The other Pharisees, though, did not approve of Jesus. They say he turned jars of water into wine at some backwards wedding. Ugh, peculiar. Uh, I also heard he makes sick people well, just like that. That's less disturbing than driving all the money changers and sellers out of the temple with a whip. Did you hear about that? Nicodemus didn't know what to think. All of these signs. Jesus couldn't do things like this if he weren't from God, right? Nicodemus was so curious he decided to talk to Jesus himself, but he didn't want the other religious leaders to know what he was doing, so he snuck out in the middle of the night to find Jesus. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. No one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Listen closely to what I say. No one can see the kingdom of heaven unless they are born again. B born again? How can someone be born another time when they're already old? Nicodemus was trying to imagine what on earth Jesus was trying to say. I mean, Nicodemus had already been born once as a Jew. Didn't that mean he would get into heaven? Surely you can't mean someone would have to go back inside their mother. Pay attention. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. <sighs> Nicodemus's mind raced. Jesus was saying that simply being a Jew wasn't enough, that following the rules couldn't get him to heaven. There was a new way. How can this be? You are Israel's teacher. Don't you understand these things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven. He is the Son of Man. Everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. 
Years later, Jesus' friend John helped to make it clear as he wrote down this amazing conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus. God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. Okay, there is so much great stuff in this one short verse. I think we better break it down. Let's start right here with God loved. God made us. He loves us more deeply than we can ever imagine. But just like Adam and Eve in the very beginning, each one of us has broken our relationship with God. Every time we lie or disobey a parent or do something we know is wrong, that's called sin, and sin hurts our relationship with God. But God had a plan to make things right. That's why God gave. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. God gave the most incredible gift ever, his own son, Jesus. Jesus lived on earth as a human being, but he lived perfectly. He never sinned, never broke a single one of God's rules. And then he gave up his own life by dying on a cross to rescue us. When Jesus died, he paid the price for our sins, sins that we could never pay for on our own. And because of Jesus, our broken relationship with God is healed. We can be close to him like sons and daughters. Anyone can have that relationship with God, whoever believes. Anybody can believe in Jesus. You, your mom, your dad, your best friend, the new kid at school, the guy who feeds pigeons at the park. Anybody can believe in Jesus because Jesus is a real person. He came to earth about 2,000 years ago. People talked with him and followed him. And like Nicodemus, they watched Jesus do amazing things from making blind people see to feeding thousands of people from one tiny little lunch. And people saw him nailed to a cross until he died. But here's the amazing part. Jesus came back to life and hundreds of people saw that too. Jesus is alive right now. He's living with God in heaven. And we can live with God forever too. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. That's the key. You can have a relationship with God, not just now, but for always. When you believe in Jesus and that he died to pay a price for your sins that you could never pay, God gives life forever with him. And just like Nicodemus discovered, you can't earn this forever life by doing all good things or following all the rules. It's a gift from the creator of the universe who loves you no matter what. Now, remember Jesus's friend John who wrote all this down? He adds another thought. God did not send his son into the world to judge the world. He sent his son to save the world through him. Amazing, isn't it? I mean, when you follow Jesus and put your trust in him, you can have confidence in knowing that you're part of this amazing, never-ending story that God is telling. And you'll be able to share that story yourself as you grow in loving God and loving others. Here's what I know. There are times in our lives when we lose confidence. Maybe it's because we're afraid we'll mess up. Or maybe we don't think we're good enough or strong enough or smart enough. But here's another thing I know. If you're a good singer, or if you're not, if you can catch a baseball, or if you can't, if you know the answers to all the questions, or if you don't, God loves you. I don't know how you see yourself, but when God sees you, he sees someone he created, someone who is loved, someone who matters. How much does God love you? It's like what John wrote. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Anyone who believes in him will not die, but have eternal life. God loved you so much that he gave his son Jesus. And whoever believes in Jesus will have a relationship with God forever. That's where my confidence comes from. No matter what I'm going through, I know that God loves me. And now you know too. That's the one thing to remember today. You can be confident because God loves you. So maybe now I can have the confidence to perform in front of other people. I mean, 
what's the worst that could happen, right? Row, row, row your boat gently down the street. Yep, God still loves me. And that's pretty cool. I'll see you next time. Thank you.